Now, we've got a sequence of Spanish items. Earlier this year, we had a sequence of Italian items on our Connect on Thursdays, but Spanish this morning, and we've got Spanish Eyes, played by Harry Atkinson, Blue Village, which is an intriguing story, told and photographed and put together in a sequence by Jenny Baker, and Patatas Bravas and Migas, by Marjorie Ann, how for, who's from our Spanish Conversation Advance Group. A first for us in our U3A sessions, a mix of spoken Spanish and English. So thank you, Derek, for Spanish Eyes. Whilst touring Andalusia in southern Spain, I came across a very unusual village. Once a traditional small whitewashed village nestling in the foothills, Pushkar, with its population of 221, was known for the large variety of fungi growing in the surrounding hills. In 2011, a large American film corporation approached the mayor and the villagers in the hope of persuading them to change the appearance of their houses as part of a campaign to promote their new movie. The children were promised mobile phones and toys to encourage everyone to get involved. The film company offered to pay for the village to be painted blue and also to paint it white again after the film premiere. Shops stocked their shelves with all the relevant novelties and keepsakes. In August 2011, the premiere took place and the stars of the movie arrived in Hushkar.
For a few years, visitors arrived in their thousands and the shops, cafes and guest houses thrived and all was well. In 2017, the heirs to the Smurf franchise took away Hushkar's rights to associate with the characters and call itself the Smurf Village. In 2018, the village was forced to rebrand itself as the Blue Village. The film company withdrew their support. Most of the statues were removed and toys and gifts were gathered up. Visitors stopped coming as the Blue Village failed to attract tourists. Shops and cafes closed and guest houses remained empty. As a result, houses are falling into disrepair and some, despite the bright blue facade, have collapsed inside. The population has fallen to well below 200 as villagers move away to find work. Will what was believed to be the saviour of this typical little white village eventually lead to its demise? Thank you to Harry for some wonderful playing there and to Jenny for that rather interesting and very unusual story with quite a sad end. Um, Jenny's quite a master of telling these stories and can, putting them together with photographs. That was superb. And now over to Marjorie Ann. We've got a number of uh, foreign language um, groups. And Marjorie-Anne is from our Spanish Conversation Advance Group. Thank you, Marjorie-Anne. Hola a todos. Hola a todos. ¿Qué tal? Estoy un poco quemada después del sol de Sidmouth ayer. Me llamo Marjorie-Anne y soy miembro de la clase avanzada de español de Cass Singleton aquí en Exmouth. Me gusta mucho hablar con ustedes esta mañana. That's as much Spanish as you're going to get for a while. <laughs> so what is an advanced class? We don't all speak it correctly. We don't all speak it fluently. We've got only one of us, I think, has worked abroad, which is really how you become fluent and has kept up his fluency by going back year after year to South America, with which he has a sort of love affair. So like most people, we learn Spanish originally because he we went on holiday there or we've got friends and family there, or perhaps we had an old O level or something that we wanted to brush up on. But we are ambitious in what we try to do. And our aim is to be able to converse properly with Spanish speaking people when we come across them. Not only just to ask directions or how to reserve a, a hotel room, but what they're thinking about, you know, are you happy to see the British tourists come back? How did you get on during the pandemic? Um, oh, I've got a guided tour around a church I'd like to go and listen to. Or simply going to the market and saying, oh, that looks good. What is it? How do you cook it? So a proper conversation with proper understanding between the two parties. And we can all read the newspapers. We can all watch their television programmes and their films. We're not too proud to spurn subtitles. And we're all, in the words of one of our group, persistent learners. We just keep on going. Our group meets weekly under the direction of Kath. And after many years of teaching French, Kath retrained as a Spanish teacher with, as she points out, uh, funding from the EU to take her courses in Pamplona and Granada. Well, you wouldn't get that these days. She keeps us on the track with a, a very varied diet of reading and writing and listening and, of course, lots of conversation. She throws in the odd grammar lesson to keep us up to the mark, but mostly she understands we're there to enjoy speaking Spanish. 
So Ian, can I have my opening slide, please? That's fine, thank you. So this morning I've chosen two very simple Spanish recipes to share with you, patatas bravas and migas, simply because they are simple and I can introduce some very basic cookery terms. I found both these recipes in Aragon, which you'll see marked, which is one of the lesser known parts of Spain. It's a fairly barren and impoverished area, but one of stark beauty. Next slide, Ian, thank you. You could be for thinking, forgiven for thinking that you see one of these slides going into the village and one of these signs coming out of the village, but actually they are two completely separate villages about five miles apart from each other. And it was in the first of these, Mora de Rubielos, that we had our lunch of pig's ears for my husband and patatas bravas for me. In most of the recipes, thanks Ian, next slide, in most of the recipes for patatas bravas, you fry the potatoes and make a spicy sauce. I prefer the version I had in Mora, where you add the spices to the potatoes and have a bland sauce. It's much healthier because you don't use much oil. So here are some of the ingredientes for uh, patatas bravas, and I'm sure you've had them in tapas bars up and down the land. A cucharada, a spoonful. A cucharada sopera, a tablespoonful. Aceite de oliva, olive oil. Sal, salt. Lava, wash, echa, put, nevera, fridge, coloca, place, and orno. Thank you, Ian. You can vary the amount of spices you need, but basically you want cuatro patatas medianas, uno cucharada sopera de aceite de oliva, una cucharada sopera de pimentón rojo, una cucharada de pimiento blanco, una cucharada sopera de hierbas provenzales, sal al gusto. Thank you. Método. Lava bien las patatas y córtalas en gajos medianos. No hace falta pelarlas. Añade sal al gusto. Echa las especias, la pimiento, las hierbas provenzales y el pimentón rojo. Echa el aceite y remuévelas bien para que quedan bien adobadas. So I cut my slices, as you see, my potatoes into apples, uh, like apple slices. And when I mix all the spices and the oil together, I do it with my hands. It's much better than using a spoon. You don't have oil, much oil, and you want to get it everywhere. Thank you, Ian. Tapalas con papel film. Y déjalas en la nevera al menos una hora. Después, calienta el horno a 200 grados. And so into the fridge the slices go. You'll find that the red paprika changes colour. It doesn't affect the taste at all. Thank you. Échalas en una bandeja de horno sobre papel vegetal. Coloca en el horno Durante 35 minutos. Prueba las después de 20 minutos. So depending on the size of your potato pieces, you may need to test them after 20 minutes or so. I reckon those would be done after 20 minutes. Thank you, Ian. Sirve las patatas con un bol de aioli. O si prefieres, mayonesa. Que aproveche. Enjoy them. Be warned, this version packs a real punch because you're adding the slices directly to the potatoes, not to the salsa. But so little oil, they have to be the healthy option. So now, thank you, Ian, we'll go on to the second recipe I have for you today, which also comes from Aragon. We were staying near Cerca uh, in this village, Nueva Los, in Aragon. And this is a picture of the countryside, Cerca Nueva Los. You can see it's very red soil, very dry. The uh, sign there says this area is reserved for hunting. It's a very, very barren area. Thank you, Ian. But in the middle of it, there is this very beautiful park with water gardens, dozens of cascades and grottos, and it makes for a lovely day out, the Monasterio del Piedro de Piedro. By the time we got to the restaurant, it was about to close and all that was left was mijas. Thank you, Ian. So migas. Migas actually means breadcrumbs and pan means bread. It doesn't mean a pan. So migas de pan son un plato de pastores, a shepherd's dish, muy tradicional en España. 
La base es el pan duro que sobra al final del día y puedes añadir, por ejemplo, ajos, chorizo, panceta, cebolla, etc. So we've got migas, we've got pan duro, stale bread, raya, to grate, seca, dry, añade, to add, a sartén, a frying pan, calienta, heat, and una mezcla, a mix. Thank you, Ian. Pan duro, es decir, pan que has comprado unas días antes. Agua, un cucharado. Aceite de oliva, una cucharada sopero, más o menos. Ajos, ajos, corit, and all the other things. Al gusto. Cortados en trojos pequeños. So you can add whatever you like. One of my favorites, I have to say, is, pan, is chopped chorizo. And here also we've got onion and pancetta and, of course, garlic. Thank you, Ian. Raya el pan en migas o trozos pequeñitos. Si las migas están muy secas, añade agua. Añade un poco de sal. En un sartén, calienta el aceite y fríe lo que quieras. Por ejemplo, ajos, chorizo, panceta, cebolla, etc. Some recipes suggest that you leave the crumbs as crouton size, but I prefer them as real crumbs because they absorb the other flavors. Don't use a food processor or you'll just get dust. Only add the water if the crumbs are really dry. Don't let them go into a soggy much. They need to retain their texture. Thank you, Ian. Añade las migas a la mezcla y cocina en la sartén durante unos 30 minutos a fuego lento. De vez en cuando mezcla todos los ingredientes con un cuchara. El sabor de los otros ingredientes hace muy sabrosas y deliciosas las migas. Al final, aumenta el fuego para hacer crujientes las migas. Cinco minutos, más o menos. 30 minutes is about enough to let the flavors do their work. Don't let the mixture st stick to the pan and turn up the heat for the last five minutes or so to get the migas nice and crisp. Thank you, Ian. Para acompañar las migas, os recomiendo un huevo frito o algunos salchichos. Espero que lo disfrutéis. So you can eat them on their own as a guilty treat, but they go brilliantly with a fried egg or sausages or sometimes chicken. And that's it. That's all. Y eso es todo. He terminado. Un placer hablar con ustedes. Hasta luego y adiós. Oh, that's great, Marjorie-Anne. It was fantastic to hear your Spanish pronunciation and then your English clear explanations of the recipes and to have the introduction of the group. That was really interesting to see what some of our groups get up to and that you've also been able to meet during lockdown, which has been great as well. So thank you ever so much. You're welcome.